Hi. Welcome to Jesus for All to God's Word, Your Daily Bread, for February 2nd, 2022. Here, you will hear daily readings of God's Word, the Bible, with the goal of accomplishing Romans chapter 10, verse 17, which reads, So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. And more importantly, Luke eleven twenty eight. but he said, more than that, blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Amen. And of course, John 1, verse 1 through 2 says, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Verse 2, he was in the beginning with God. And verse 14, and the Lord became, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father full of grace and truth. And John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And John 14.6, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And 1 Peter 2.24, Who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. Amen. And John 15, 7, If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. And the book of Luke, chapter 10, verse 19, read, chapter 10, Verse 18 through 19 reads, And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means, any means hurt you. And John 15, 26, But when the Helper comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. And John 16, 8 through 11. And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Verse 9, of sin, because they do not believe in me. Verse 10, of righteousness, because I go to my Father and you shall see me no more. And verse 11, of judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. And so today we shall hear. Psalm 17, Proverb 2, because it is the second day of the month, and there are 31 Proverbs, one for seemingly each day of the month, from Song of Solomon, chapter 3, verse 1 through 11. The Old Testament reading will be from the book of Genesis, chapter 47, verse 1 through chapter 48, verse 22, and the New Testament reading will be from the book of Matthew, chapter 20, verse 21 through 30. Nine. All scriptures are taken from the New King James Version of the Bible, copyright 1982 by Thomas Nelson Incorporated, used by permission, all rights reserved. And now, Psalm 17, attributed to David, and it reads, Hear a just cause, O Lord, attend to my cry, give ear to my prayer, which is not from deceitful lips. Let my vindication come from your presence, let your eyes look on the things that are upright. You have tested my heart, you have visited me in the night, you have tried me and have found nothing. I have purposed that my mouth shall not transgress. Concerning the works of men, by the word of your lips, I have kept away from the path of the destroyer. Uphold my steps in your paths, that my footsteps may not slip. I have called upon you, for you will hear me, O God. Incline your ear to me, and hear my speech. Show your marvelous loving kindness by your right hand. O you who save those who trust in you, from those who rise up against you. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me from the shadow of your wings. Pardon me, let me take that again. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me under 
the shadow of your wings from the wicked who oppress me from my deadly enemies who surround me they have closed up their fat hearts with their mouths they speak proudly they have now surrounded us in our steps they have set their eyes crouching down to the earth as a lion is eager to tear his prey and like a young lion lurking in secret places verse 13 arise o lord confront him cast him down deliver my life from the wicked with your sword with your hand from men o lord from men of the world who have their portion in this life and whose belly you fill with your hidden treasure they are satisfied with children and leave the rest of their possession for their babies verse 15 as for me i will see your face in righteousness i shall be satisfied when i awaken in your likeness hallelujah and glory to god in the highest amen and amen this word is already blessed and i pray that every hearer has also been blessed and now proverb 2 and it reads my son if you receive my words and treasure my commands within you so that you incline your ear to wisdom and apply your heart to understanding yes if you cry out for discernment and lift up your voice for understanding if you seek her as silver and search for her as for hidden treasures then you will understand the fear of the lord and find the knowledge of god for the lord gives wisdom from his mouth come knowledge and understanding he stores up sound wisdom for the upright he is a shield to those who walk uprightly he guards the path of justice and preserves the way of his saints then you will understand righteousness and justice equity and every good path verse 10 when wisdom enters your heart and knowledge is is pleasant to your soul discretion will preserve you understanding will keep you to deliver you from the way of evil from the man who speaks perverse things from those who leave the paths of uprightness to walk in the ways of darkness who rejoice in doing evil and delight in the perversity of the wicked whose ways are crooked and who are devious in their paths to deliver you from the immoral woman from the seductress who flatters with her words who forsakes the companion of her youth and forgets the covenant of her god for her house leads down to death and her paths to the dead none who go to her return nor do they regain the paths of life verse twenty so you may walk in the way of goodness and keep to the paths of righteousness for the upright will dwell in the land and the blameless will remain in it verse twenty two and last but the wicked will be cut off from the earth and the unfaithful we up will be uprooted from it amen amen and amen and in the mighty name of jesus christ i pray wisdom over every hearer that you may know that when a gender male or female is referred it applies to both for we know that they are also from verse 16 immoral men we know that there are seducers who flatter with the lip words we know that there are also men who forsake the companion of their youth and forget the covenant of God. So I pray that the hearer of this word and all these words in the mighty name of Jesus Christ will be wise, that the Holy Spirit will lead you into all understanding. And now, from the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, beginning at verse 1, and it reads, The Shulamite by night on my bed i sought the one i love i sought him but i did not find him i will rise now i said and go about the city in the streets and in the squares i will seek the one i love i sought him but i did not find him the watchmen who go about the city found me i said have you seen the one i love scarcely had i passed by them when i found the one i love I held him and would not let him go, until I had brought him to the house of my mother, and into the chamber of her who conceived me. Verse 5. I charge you, O daughters of Jerusalem, by the gazelles or by the does of the field, do not stir up nor awaken love until it pleases. The Shulamite. Who is this coming out of the wilderness like pillars of smoke? perfumed with myrrh and frankincense with all the merchants fragrant powders behold it is solomon's couch 
with sixty valiant men around it, of the valiant of Israel. They all hold swords, being expert in war. Every man has his sword on his thigh, because of fear in the night. Verse 9. Of the wood of Lebanon, Solomon the king made himself a palaquin. He made its pillars of silver, its support of gold, its seat of purple, its interior paved with love by the daughters of Jerusalem. Verse 11 and last. Go forth, O daughters of Zion, and see King Solomon with the crown, with which his mother crowned him, on the day of his wedding, the day of the gladness of his heart. Amen. And this word, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, is already blessed. And now the Old Testament reading from the book of Genesis, beginning at chapter 40. Seven. Chapter 47 And it reads Then Joseph went and told Pharaoh, and said, My father and my brothers and their flocks and their herds and all that they possess have come from the land of Canaan, and indeed they are in the land of Goshen. And he took five men from among his brothers and presented them to Pharaoh. Then Pharaoh said to his brothers, What is your occupation? And they said to Pharaoh, Your servants are shepherds, both we and also our fathers. And they said to Pharaoh, We have come to dwell in the land because your servants have no pasture for their flocks, for the famine is severe in the land of Canaan. Now, therefore, please let your servants dwell in the land of Goshen. Then Pharaoh spoke to Joseph, saying, Your father and your brothers have come to you. The land of Egypt is before you. Have your father and brothers dwell in the best of the land. Let them dwell in the land of Goshen. And if you know any competent men among them, then make them chief herdsmen over my livestock. Verse 7. Then Joseph brought in his father Jacob and set him before Pharaoh, and Jacob blessed Pharaoh. Pharaoh said to Jacob, How old are you? And Jacob said to Pharaoh, The days of the years of my pilgrimage, pilgrimage are one hundred and thirty years. Few and evil have been the days of the years of my life, and they have not attained to the days of the years of the life of my fathers in the days of their pilgrimage. So Jacob blessed Pharaoh and went out from before Pharaoh. Verse 11, And Joseph situated his father and his brothers and gave them possession in the land of Egypt, in the best of the land, in the land of Ramses, as Pharaoh had commanded. Then Joseph provided his father, his brothers, and all his father's household with bread, according to the number in their families. Now there was no bread in all the land, for the famine was very severe, so that the land of Egypt had the land of Canaan, languish because of famine. And Joseph gathered up all the money that was found in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan for the grain which they bought. And Joseph brought the money into Pharaoh's house. So when the money failed in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan, all the Egyptians came to Joseph and said, Give us bread, for why should we die? in your presence, for the money has failed. Then Joseph said, Give your livestock, and I will give you bread for your livestock, if the money is gone. So they brought their livestock to Joseph, and Joseph gave them bread in exchange for the horses, the flocks, the cattle of the herds, and for the donkeys. Then he fed them with bread in exchange for all their livestock that year. When that year had ended, they came to him the next year and said to him, we will not hide from my Lord that our money is gone. My Lord has also our herds of livestock. There is nothing left in the sight of my Lord but our bodies and our, ha our lands. Why should we die Because your eyes, before your eyes, both we and our land? Buy us and our land for bread, and we and our land will be servants of Pharaoh. Give us seed that we may live and not die that the land may not be desolate. Verse 20. 
Then Joseph brought all the land of Egypt for Pharaoh, for every man of the Egyptians sold his field, because the famine was severe upon them. So the land became Pharaoh's, and as for the people, he moved them into the cities, from one end of the border of Egypt to the other end. Only the land of the priests he did not buy. For the priests had rations allotted to them by Pharaoh, and they ate their rations which Pharaoh gave them. Therefore they did not sell their lands. Then Joseph said to the people, Indeed, I have brought you and your land this year, this day, for Pharaoh. Look, here is seed for you, and you shall sow the land. And it shall come to pass in the harvest that you shall give one-fifth to Pharaoh. Four-fifths shall be your own, as seed for the field and for your food, for those of your household, and as food for your little ones. So they said, You have saved our lives. Let us find favor in the sight of my Lord, and we will be Pharaoh's servants. And Joseph made it a law under the land of Egypt to this day, that Pharaoh should have one-fifth except for the land of the priest only, which did not become Pharaoh's. Verse 27. So Israel dwelt in the land of Egypt in the country of Goshen, and they had possessions there, and grew and multiplied exceedingly. And Jacob lived in the land of Egypt for seventeen years. So the length of Jacob's life was one hundred and forty-seven years. When the time drew near that Israel must die, he called his sons Joseph and said, his son Joseph, and said to him, Now, if I have found favor in your sight, please put your hand under my thigh and deal kindly and truly with me. Please do not bury me in Egypt, but let me lie with my fathers. You shall carry me out of Egypt and bury me in their burial place. And he said, I will do as you have said. Then he said, Swear to me. And he swore to him. So Israel bowed himself on the head of the bed. Now it came to pass after these things that Joseph was old. Indeed, your father is six. And he took with him his two sons. Joseph was told. Indeed, your father is sick. And he took with him his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. And Jacob was told, Look, your son Joseph is coming to you. And Israel strengthened himself and sat up on the bed. Then Jacob said to Joseph, God Almighty appeared to me at Luz in the land of Canaan and blessed me, and said to me, Behold, I will make you fruitful and multiply you, and I will make, you, make of you a multitude of people, and give this land to your descendants after you as an everlasting possession. And now your two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, who were born to you in the land of Egypt before I came to you in Egypt, are mine. As Reuben and Simeon, they sh shall be mine. Your offspring who you beget after them shall be yours. They will be called by the name of their brothers in their inheritance. But as for me, when I came from Padan, Rachel died be beside me in the land of Canaan on the way, where there was little where there was but a little distance to go to Ephraim, Ephrathath. And I buried her there on the way to Ephrath, that is Bethlehem. Then Israel saw Joseph's sons and said, Who are these? And Joseph said to his father, They are my sons whom God has given me in this place. And he said, Please bring them to me and I will bless them. Now the eyes of Israel were dim with age so that he could not see. Then Joseph brought them near him. And he kissed them and embraced them. And Israel said to Joseph, I had not thought to see your face, but in fact God has also shown me your offspring. So Joseph brought them before, brought them from beside his knees, and he bowed down with his face to the earth. And Joseph took them both, Ephraim with his right hand toward Israel's left hand, and Manasseh with his left hand toward Israel's right hand, and brought them near him. Then Israel stretched out his right hand and laid it on Ephraim's head, who was the younger, and his left hand on Manasseh's head, guiding his hands knowingly, for Manasseh was the firstborn. And he blessed Joseph and said, God before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac walked, the God who has fed me all my life, long to this day, the angel who has redeemed me from all evil, bless the lads, let my name be named upon them and the name of my fathers abraham and isaac and let them grow into a multitude in the midst of the earth now when joseph saw that his father laid his right hand on the head of ephraim it displeased him so he 
took hold of his father's hand to remove it from Ephraim's head to Manasseh's head. And Joseph said to his father, Not so, my father, for this one is the firstborn. Put your right hand on his head. But his father refused and said, I know, my son, I know. He also shall become a people, and he also shall be great. But truly his younger brother shall be greater than he, and his descendants shall become a multitude of nations. So he blessed them that day, saying, By you Israel will bless, saying, May God make you as Ephraim and as Manasseh. And thus he said, Ephraim before Manasseh. Verse 21, Then Israel said to Joseph, Behold, I am dying, but God will be with you and bring you back to the land of your fathers. Verse 22 and last, Moreover, I have given to you one portion above your brothers, which I took from the hand of the Amorite, with my sword and my bow. Amen. And this word, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, is already blessed as I pray, is every hearer in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And now the New Testament reading from the book of Matthew. And we are in chapter 15, continuing at verse 21. And it reads, then Jesus went out from there and departed to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came from that region and kept, cried out to him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely demon-possessed. But he answered her not a word, and his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she cries out after us. But he answered and said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. And she said, Yes, Lord, yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said to her, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. Verse 29, Jesus departed from there, skirted the Sea of Galilee, and went up on the mountain, and sat down there. Then great multitudes came to him, having with them the lame, blind, mute, maimed, and many others. And they laid them down at Jesus' feet, and he healed them. So the multitude marveled when they saw the mute speaking, the maimed made whole, the lame walking, and the blind seeing, and they glorified the God of Israel. Now Jesus called his disciples to him and said, I have compassion on the multitude, because they have now continued with me three days and have nothing to eat, and I do not want to send them away hungry, lest they faint on the way. Then his disciples said to him, Where should we get enough bread in the wilderness to fill such a great multitude? Jesus said to them, How many loaves do you have? And they said, Seven, and a few little fish. So he commanded the multitude to sit down on the ground, and he took the seven loaves and the fish and gave thanks, broke them and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave to the multitude. So they all ate and were filled, and they took up seven large baskets full of the fragments that were left. Now those who ate were four thousand men, besides women and children. Verse 39 and last, And he sent away the multitude, got into the boat, and came to the region of Magdala. Amen, amen, and amen. And in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, this word is already blessed. And in Jesus' name, I pray every hearer has also been blessed. And that as it says in Psalm 107, verse 20, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from all their destructions. In Jesus' name, I pray we have all been healed and delivered from every destruction. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen, amen, amen. In Jesus' name.